Hello and welcome to part nine in the 10 part XAPI and Articulate Storyline tutorial series. Today we're looking at how you can query the Learning Record Store. So even if you haven't followed along with all of the last eight tutorials, you'll be able to follow along with what we're doing today as long as you have a decent understanding of an XAPI statement and Learning Record Stores. And the reason for that is because in this video, rather than send XAPI statements from a storyline course, we're looking at how we can pull data from the learning record store so that we can then make use of it in our learning experience. Um, this is kind of foundational knowledge because you'll be able to use this when it comes time to build adaptive learning experiences or create XAPI powered leaderboards, which we're going to do in the next video. So it's really you know, querying the LRS is really important for when you want to start making use of that learning data inside of an e-learning experience. So let's get started. We're going to start today in a, in a JavaScript file. And rather than you, you know, we're not going to use that XAPI statement.js file. We're actually going to create a new file. So here I am in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to create a new file and then I'm going to save it as query um, dot js and I'll change this file type from plain text to all files and then I'll just save it in the folder I'll be working in today. So once we have the query.js file uh, created, we need to set the conf object so that it's authenticated with our learning record store. You'll see I have my veracity LRS open right here. Here's my endpoint and I have an access key. Um, this is important, okay? So this access key that I used, notice that it has write permission, but when we first created this, I did not give it read permission. So what this means is that if anyone has these credentials right now, they can send statements to this learning record store, but unless I turn this on, they will not be able to pull data from the learning record store. So since the whole point of today's talk is to query the LRS and pull data from the LRS, we do need to turn this on and then we'll save it. So now you'll see that read is set to true and write is set to true. If you're using a different LRS, you need to go ahead and use this same approach to make sure that it has both read and write permissions enabled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the output folder that we published um, in the last video. I'm going to open the XAPI statement file. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this conf object that we had, we'd been using for the last several videos. So you'll notice this has the LRS endpoint, it has the user and the pass. And you can see that here. The username, the password, and the endpoint, which has gotten from right here, that all lines up with you know, what we've been using. If this is the first time you're, you're seeing this conf object, go ahead and uh, pause the video and copy this, just like this. Um, Another option is you can go ahead and pull up this tutorial. It's devlinpeck.com slash tutorials slash query hyphen LRS. And that will bring you to this text-based tutorial where we go through all of this together. Um, yeah, so when you're ready to continue, take a look back over here. Notice that once we set this conf object, we're using this command from the XAPI wrapper to go ahead and um, set that authentication with the learning record store. So this is a command from the XAPI wrapper. If you've watched previous videos, you've probably seen us use this before. If not, just go ahead and check out that text-based tutorial and you'll see where to get it. But what this should be signaling to you is that for this query to work, we are going to need access to this XAPI wrapper file, just like we get access to it when we go ahead and send the statements. So once we're authenticated with the learning record store, and the read permissions are enabled, we are ready to go ahead and start crafting our query. So with XAPI, there are only so many things you can query based off of, and I'll get into that in a second. Let's copy another one of these um, XAPI wrapper commands. So right now we're setting up a variable called parameters, and we're letting the XAPI wrapper know that we're about to tell it which parameters to search for, okay? So this is again, just something that we'll need to copy and paste. This is a command made available by the XAPI wrapper. So once we have that variable set up, we need to start telling um, 
we need to start telling the LRS which variables we want back or, or which, what type of data we want back. So, you know, as you probably know, some previous videos there, um, look here, you know, we can even actually look at this X API statement over here. There's an actor object. We can see we have the actor's name. We have their email address. We have a verb ID. We have the plain English version of the verb. We can see a description of the object, the object and the object ID. We, get, we even get into a result object where we can include duration and what the user responds, what, what they scored on different quizzes or questions. Um, the thing is, is with the X API spec, you can only build a query off of very specific information. I can't, I can't build a query that says, give me all of the X API statements where the user's response matches, um, you know, choice A. Okay. I, and similarly, I can't say, give me all of the, you know, give me all of the X API statements where the user scored at 100%. Okay. I can arrive at that, but I have to use one of the allowed queries. And here are the ones that are allowed. You can query by the statement ID. And this is usually automatically generated by the LRS when it receives a statement. There's just one ID per statement. So you're probably not going to use that one very much. You can query by the agent. So this is a popular one. So I'll copy this. Um, and you can identify that agent with the email address, which is what we do in our, in our videos. You see user email JS. We're getting that email address from um, Storyline. So we'll use that approach and I'll go ahead and copy that into our query. We can also query by the verb ID. Okay. So I'll copy this here too, just so we have an example of it. And we can query by the object ID, which in this case is called activity. And finally you can query by query by timestamp. So you can say, you know, give me all of the statements that match these given criteria since this specific date or up until a specific date. And you can combine all of these queries. So you can say, you know, give me all of the statements made by Devlin at Peck Doc Consulting, where he initialized something between this specific uh, time frame. Okay. So let's just build a quick query and see how we can actually pull some statements from this learning record store. So let's see here. So I use this Devlin Peck at gmail.com email address. So instead of this um, Peck doc consulting one, we're going to swap it out with this. Let's, let's see, we, we, maybe we want to pull all of the statements where Devlin um, failed a quiz. Okay. So let's get this failed verb. So you see, I'm just copying this from the X API statements that are already in my LRS. So, um, so for this verb ID, we're going to use failed. And for the activity, maybe we don't want to, um, yeah, we want to see every time Devlin failed quiz one. Okay. So remember we're getting the object ID for that activity parameter. Okay. So, so we have this set up. We want all of the X API statements from this learning record store where the actor's email address is devlinpeck at gmail.com where he failed something and particularly where he failed this quiz one. And notice that we're using the IDs. These are the URIs. We can't just put in, um, you know, failed. Like if we just did this, it, it wouldn't do anything. It has to be the full verb ID that we use to send the statements. Again, to get this, the, to see all, exactly how this is formatted, just go ahead and hop over here to this tutorial. And we need one more piece here. We need to execute one more X API wrapper command so that we can go ahead and actually get those statements. So right now we're kind of preparing the query. We tell, we tell the query what um, elements we want to query based off of. And then we execute this command right here to go ahead and actually retrieve those statements from the learning record store. So I want to show you something else here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually start executing this code and see what we get returned for this query data variable. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open this manage X API project storyline output file uh, that we would have created last week because this, this index file already has access to the XAPI wrapper. 
And remember, we need access to that wrapper to go ahead and execute these queries. So I'm going to open the console by pressing F12 on my keyboard. And now I can just execute JavaScript in here as if I was executing it in the index file itself. So we know by looking at this JavaScript that it's already authenticated with the, um, with the LRS, you see? Because whenever this file right here loads, it has access to this XAPI statement.js file, which, which uses this conf object to authenticate with the learning record store. So that line of code we're good on. We do want to execute this to go ahead and pull those XAPI statements from the LRS. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it right here. All right, it's telling us that we have a bad request. So let's go ahead and check this really quickly. Activity verb, mbox. Okay, so it looks like this, we, we forgot this mbox key right here. There we go, this should be good now. Um, so yeah, we needed to include this in this whole part of the object. You'll notice this here when we're using, when we're getting the actor, you see we have this mbox equal mail to plus the email address. So I was just putting the mail to, but we also need mbox to make this a full valid object. Because remember, this agent property could also be an account. So um, we, we need to specify that we wanna get this by the mbox property. So now that this should be good, let's go ahead and copy this. I'm going to refresh this page and we're going to paste this again. Perfect. Okay, so the code executed. Now if we type in this variable, we want to see what got returned, okay? Because we're setting this query data variable equal to the actual response that the LRS gives us. So if we type in query data here, we'll see that we have an array. The first item in the array is called statements, okay? So we're going, to, or an object, sorry. We have an object um, and we want to get this statements child. So we're going to do query data dot statements. Okay. And now it gives us this array of these statements, the full XAPI statements that match these criteria that we set up right here. So if you watch, we can expand this and we can see the full thing. We can see the actor's name, their email address. Um, the object is quiz one. We can, we can even open up this result object. We can see how long they spent on the quiz, nine seconds. We can see their score, they got a 50%, which is a fail. And same thing, we can open up this next XAPI statement. We can see again, you know, we can open all of this. The object, they failed, I failed quiz one. Um, I spent three seconds on the quiz, so I must have just went through it super fast. But you can see, once we have back this array, we can work with it to change storyline variables. And like I said earlier, just because we can't, you know, we can't query based off of the duration or the response or the score, but what we can do is we can query off of those elements that are allowed, like the verb ID, the, the object ID, and the, the user, and then we can get full access to um, the score, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we can do that. So we have these two statements. So I'll say, um, give me the very first statement in this array. And you know, just if you're not familiar with the arrays, just a quick crash course, arrays are zero indexed. So we have two items in this array and you'll see this first one is in position zero and the second item is in position one, okay? So, if, so with these square brackets, we can get access to the items in the array. If I do you know, query data dot statements with a zero between the square brackets, I'll get the first statement. And if I do a one, then I'll get this second statement. So we'll get the first one. And now I can just work my way down with dot notation to get access to the different parts of the XAPI statement. So you see here, we can see this first statement's children, actor, verb, object, and result. So if I wanna get like the, the scaled score, for example, I know that that's a child of the result object. And just to show you how I know that, let's look over here. You can see, here's the XAPI statement, actor, verb, object, result, and then we can go into result.score, and then a child of score is this scaled score. So we'll do 
query data dot statements zero dot result dot score dot scaled. And when I press enter, you see it gives me 0 0.5. If I expand this first statement, you can see that is the scaled score. So when you want to access these different parts of the statement, you just keep drilling down into it using, using these periods, which is called dot notation. So, uh, and again, in the next video, I'll show you how we, with this data that we get returned, we can actually change storyline variables and create a leaderboard based off of this scaled score element right here. But let me show you something different. Let's say we just want to see all of the XAPI statements that were done by uh, this email address, devlinpeck at gmail.com. So all I did is I used these two forward slashes to comment out these lines, uh, which means that when you execute them, it's like they're not even there. You know, developers used to leave comments. You know, this is a comment. Just to say what the code does. So it doesn't actually affect the code. We're just leaving it there in case we want to re-enable them later. So now I'm going to copy this code. And this time I should get every single XAPI statement where Devlin was the actor. So I'll execute it again. And now we'll do query data dot statements. And now when I press enter, you see we have an array with 18 different statements. Okay. So again, these will be all, you know, these will be all different verbs, all different activities because we didn't filter by that. Um, likewise, we can say we want it, We don't want to just see every time Devlin failed quiz one. We want to see every time there is an XAPI statement where Devlin Peck at gmail.com was the actor and this quiz one was the, was the activity or object ID. So once again, I will refresh this. We'll copy and paste that. And now we'll execute query data dot statements and we'll see we have four statements. So we can probably already assume that two of these are going to be passes and two of these are going to be fails because you know, when we, when we looked at all the ones where I failed earlier, we got two. So right now I can see this success is true. So this one is a pass. This one is a fail and this one is a pass. So that means this first one, sure enough, is a fail. And I'm looking at that success property right here to see if it's a pass or a fail. So that's how you, that's how you query, the, query the LRS. Um, you know, right now we're just doing it in the console. If you do want to learn how to do it in, uh, to, to you know, make a web page that shows the results, I do talk about how to do this in my tutorial. You, you can just scroll down to the bottom. Um, and I show you how to make a really simple web page where, you know, it looks just like this, where it will show you the results. You don't really need to do that. That was just for demonstration purposes, because again, you have that full statement stream already in your learning record store. But where the, where this skill set really will come in handy is when we start executing this kind of code from a storyline course and changing the course based off of the data that we receive. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen there. I hope that uh, the power of, you know, the power of querying probably isn't fully making itself known yet. Um, because again, you know, once you see how you can actually manipulate storyline variables based off of that data, that's how it's going to get useful. And just as a quick example, imagine if you have multiple different courses and you use XAPI to track every single question that someone answers wrong in those courses. Well, then at the end, you can have a review lesson that has a big question bank and using XAPI, you know, you can say, okay, let's grab this user's email address. Let's look at every question that this user answered incorrectly. And then, um, you know, we'll change storyline variables and only show them these questions that they answered incorrectly so they can try them again and get some extra review and practice. So that's just a quick example, but there are so many possibilities using this skill set. Um, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And again, in the next video, we will look at how to go ahead and um, build an XAPI enabled leaderboard and storyline using this type of data that gets returned. So if you are getting value from this and you wanna you know, follow along with all these XAPI and e-learning videos, then please go ahead and subscribe. Um, and if you wanna attend live, I do have weekly live workshops where we dive into XAPI topics and, and similar things. So thank you for sticking through the whole video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.